What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we got to check out some wrestling-related news from WrestleMania. Apparently, The Rock now has some backstage heat. Uh, the reason why WWE censored SmackDown, I saw someone talking on Twitter that uh, there was a part of uh, the Rock segment that got potentially blacked out because it was being they were censoring something. I don't remember seeing that last night, so I'm not sure about that. And then also the worst sale. They are probably talking about the Austin Theory getting hit with the Stunner RKO combination. I'm not gonna lie to you, that shit was hilarious. But we're gonna check out uh, what WrestleMania has for us in the news, wrestling related today. Appreciate all the love and support, man. We're gonna get right into this one. Should be a very interesting. Hey guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Join us now as we look at this week's edition of the Blue Brand, as well as the wildest news stories and rumors you need to know, including is a champion injured? The Rock has backstage heat. The Rock roasts Cody again in another video. WWE had to censor SmackDown for the funniest reason. Bray Wyatt's Hall of Fame status. WWE superstars appearing in another promotion mm -hmm. and much more. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania Shorts. As always, we won't recap the matches, but just look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. As always, we start off with the good as the number one brilliant bout between Bailey and Dakota. Last night's Bailey vs. Kai match was a brilliantly booked match that helped further the storyline of Bailey's war against the damage control, and it intrigued by having Naomi run in to help Bailey okay. and gave the WWE Universe a hint of what Bailey and Dakota can do in the ring. Number two, Rock Concert changes things up. Mm -hmm. Was the Rock's concert the Great One's best performance? Well, we'd like to admit far from it, but it did give the WWE Universe some variety in the build-up to Cody vs. Roman Reigns, a match that is still three weeks away and the yeah. WWE needs to be careful as it wants to maintain the sizzle without giving away the stake. Next week's confrontation between Cody and Roman should help as Roman has become far too secondary in his mm -hmm. own storyline. Also, kudos to the WWE bringing back Hollywood Rock's theme. Yep. It just fits his persona so perfectly. Number nah, three. That was, that was, I love what they did there. I'm glad The Rock's not going to be there. He's been there for the past few weeks now. So now it's going to be Roman and Cody. They're going to get a chance to cook. And I hope and I pray they book Cody to actually start trying to pit these guys against each other. Start planting the seeds of doubt between Roman and The Rock. Because The Rock... He's, he, we know he's clearly star power wise. He's on another level and Roman is there, but he's not there yet. So the best way to really make this story that much more interesting is to create that dissension, create that, that questioning of, can you really trust him? You, y'all, you say y'all are family and this is, it's all about family and the bloodline. But at the end of the day, no one's talking about you, Roman. They're talking about The Rock. You know, play that up. I hope they, I hope he does that. But uh, he's been, The Rock's been carrying this uh, WrestleMania uh, build up. I'm not going to lie to you. My personal opinion, I think he's been carrying it as a, as expected. So Nick Aldis lays down the law again. Nick Aldis continues to show he's a man not to be trifled with, as he doesn't let the inmates run the asylum and acts like an authority figure who's not afraid to use the power given to him. Yes. Aldis no so Logan Paul's demand that Randy Orton apologize to him, telling the Maverick that it was something that he should do on his own. Later in the show, Aldis exercised his authority by booking Paul into a triple threat match against Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, a pleasant reminder of who is running the show. Mm -hmm. Number four, Grayson Waller and Austin Theory aren't afraid to tread water. Grayson Weller and Austin Theory continue to show why they're a good team player as both men serve supporting roles in Logan Paul's feud with Kevin Owens and Randy Orton. Both superstars have upper card and perhaps even main event features, but they seem okay playing Stooges for now. That shouldn't be a problem as the WWE seems to have bigger things ahead for them with their feud that will likely begin after WrestleMania. And yeah, I'm I'm honestly that you know they're they're kind of playing the the JAG roles right now, but I'm waiting for the feud between Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. They've been teasing it. I'm just waiting for when they finally pull the trigger there, and then we may be able to get something interesting out of both these guys, hopefully. So we'll we'll see how that, that plays out. And WrestleMania is taking shape on SmackDown. Last night's announcement that Logan Paul will defend the US Championship against Kevin Owens and Randy Orton was good news, as was AJ sure. Styles accepting LA Knight's challenge with a chair tonight's back. 
SmackDown has been treading water in terms of building up Mania's undercard, and last night was a step in the right direction. Of course. But that was good. What about the bad? Is number one, LWO loses the Brawling Brutes at 2024. Is it time to scrap the LWO? The group mm. has been weak ever since Legado del Fantasma members turned babyface and joined forces with Rey Mysterio. Now they're nothing short of pathetic as their only role is to job to Santos Escobar and his version of Legado del Fantasma, allowing Rey to swoop in and save the day. Having Legato stomp on LWO every week is doing nothing for the heels as it's Facts. clear that the only person who can win matches is Rey Mysterio. Sadly, the LWO is much like the brawling brutes, but with Rey playing Sheamus. Hopefully Papa Rey doesn't get dragged down by his teammates like the Celtic Warrior did by his team's constant losses. Number two. Yeah, LWO, they, they haven't been presented as anything credible outside of fucking Rey. That's it, bro. They they haven't, bro. They, they have been... Con They've been built up, even with the talent that they have in there, they've been presented like fucking losers. The L in LWO stands for fucking losers. <laughs> so, I don't know what they're going to do with them. I mean, not everybody can be top contenders, you know, in WWE. You're going to have to have those individuals that, you know, have those losing streaks. But, I mean, I wouldn't want them to split them up, but they got to get some type of momentum. Because right now, they're just a bunch of... JAGs that are under Rey Mysterio at this point, so. Why is SmackDown having a tournament for a six-pack challenge? Nick Aldis does many things right as SmackDown general manager, but the call to determine the blue brand's entrance in a six-pack challenge was a little puzzling. While each show has its own GM, shouldn't there be some type of uniformity in determining how teams qualify for a match? Mm -hmm. And the downright ugly. Now, come on, we had to include it. What was that <laughs> sell by Austin Theory? The hesitation of the jump and him just lunging forward just made it look so bad. He needs to take a page out of Randy Orton's book of smoothness. But to be fair, other than The Rock's concert, it wasn't a particularly special show. Now, there's no question that W. A lot to you, that shit was so stupid. <laughs> it was stupid, but it was funny only because. You wasn't expecting all that extraness off the, the stunner to the RKO. That shit was funny. I'm not going to lie to you. And I don't want to be hypercritical because guess what? The people's champ. He's done that too with the Stone Cold Stunner. Flopping all over the place. <laughs> when you look back at it, it makes no sense, but it's hilarious. Same thing with HBK. Be flopping all over the place. So I don't want to give him too much heat for it. Me, personally, I just thought that shit was hilarious, dog. It shouldn't be something he does every week, but he does oversell, especially the stunner. He does the little, that shit, like, bro, it's fucking hilarious. CW is enjoying an incredible surge of success, but why does it feel like they need to play things so safely when it can quickly lead to boredom? Why not shake things up with a breakout star or feud to keep fans interested in SmackDown rather than killing time until Mania? Yeah, What did you guys think of the Blue Bear last point. night? Let us know in the comments down below. Now let's move on to the news. Now first we looks at a champion injured. On top of today's news are concerns that SmackDown superstar Asuka may be injured. Oh no. The WWE Universe is voicing its collective concern after a video surfaced of Asuka appearing to be limping in the ring after Damage Control attacked Bayley during the role models match against Dakota Kai. Sports Kida noted that Asuka did not appear to be injured when she was at ringside and it appears she may have been injured during Damage oh, Control's no. running on Bayley. Asuka was struck and hit the mat, after which she appeared to be limping for the rest of the segment. It could have just been a damn good sell, but as of right now, there's no word on Asuka's condition, but if so, it's another blow to the blue brand following Charlotte Flair's injury. The Damage Control storyline has been one of SmackDown's best in recent memory, and mm -hmm. if Asuka is hurt, hopefully the WWE can work around her injury. We'll continue following this story. Yeah, I hope not, because that would kind of mess up things potentially going into WrestleMania. They need everybody that's in part of Damage Control to be healthy to kind of build this feud and this story so i'm hoping that's not the case man we're gonna keep our fingers crossed on that one next up the rock roast cody again in another video well, the rock is showing he's still got it whether it's mm -hmm. roasting opponents in person on tv or cutting videos where he delivers a verbal smackdown to their candy asses the Rock recently had more fun at Cody Rhodes' expense on SmackDown when he held his Rock concert and promised to whoop <laughs> Cody with his weight belt and deliver it to Cody's mother. The Rock also delivered a similar promo online, mocking Cody after the American Nightmare poured his heart out to the WWE Universe on Raw, only for The Rock to just simply say, Are you effing kidding me? Yeah. Are you fing kidding me? <laughs> you start fing crying? You start crying? 
That's how you respond. No wonder all your fans are crybabies. No wonder because they're Superman, they're hero. He's not crying too. <laughs> you can cry. So good. You can cry. I can't give the belt to Dusty, but I can give it to my mama. I can give it to my mommy. <laughs> my mommy. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> give it to your mommy. The Rock has been in rare form as he's eviscerated both Cody and Seth Rollins on the microphone, setting his Hollywood Rock character to maximum heat. As entertaining as Rock segments have been, the WWE needs to make sure that Rock doesn't eclipse Roman Reigns when it comes to WrestleMania's main event, and that The Rock doesn't make Cody and Seth look like saps. Even if the WWE is going with the idea that The Rock is setting Roman up, the promotion must protect its full-time main event players and keep them strong. Given the recent news that The Rock is expected to be out after WrestleMania, and likely until SummerSlam, due to his Hollywood obligations, burying three of the company's top stars while the man with the shovel is off TV doesn't seem very wise. Next up, here's the thing, man. He is he's overshadowing everybody. The only person that's really like, well, I don't even know, because right now Cody's getting cooked, bro. He had some momentum, you know, with slapping the rock uh, last week, but he's getting cooked. Seth has been getting cooked. Roman was cooking him. <laughs> At that press conference they had a while back. And well, even before then, basically calling that championship that title reign meaningless a second tier championship which you all know but seth's been getting cooked by roman not then he got cooked by the rock and now the rock is just cooking both of them and roman's just chilling because he don't even have to do too much so he's kind of overshadowing everybody i'm just being honest with you so this is why i'm glad they are having that one-on-one -on -one segment him and cody and i just need cody to really bring that aggressiveness monday he needs to bring the aggressiveness verbally to The Rock, let him know. And then Friday, he needs to continue that. That's all I'm saying. Because you want people to buy into your baby face. If this was Stone Cold in that situation, do you honestly think he would have, you know what I'm saying, cried on Monday Night Raw? Granted, it was an emotional promo, but he would have had some passion to it. But then he would have started talking his trash and letting them know why they're about to catch a can of whoop ass at WrestleMania. Like, I don't know. He I know that's not his persona, but he has to get some of that edge because at the end of the day, you want people to buy into the idea that this guy can hang with the greats and The Rock is one of the greats. He can take down Roman Reigns. He future hall of famer you gotta convince people you know not just on the 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 presentation with the three-piece suits and stuff like that we get that he's fresh he's fly that's cool but there's there's nothing wrong with a baby face getting a little bit aggressive and letting people know i'm not standing for no bullshit so the rock has backstage heat and whilst we're on the subject of this promo, it seems yeah. that some of the WWE think that The Rock has taken them a little bit too far and has reportedly rubbed some people up the wrong way, and it's due to these promos being profanity filled. Now obviously we're in a PG era of WWE, and higher ups in WWE have memoed talent on guidelines on TV and social media, and they are mostly banned from any profanity in their social media uh -huh. posts. However, most feel that this is a double standard, as yeah. why does The Rock get away with so much profanity but others have to adhere to the rules? One source from SC Scoops replied, even if he's the big movie star, shouldn't everyone play by the same rules so he can curse and use that to get over but everyone else is handcuffed? Is it fair? What do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. It isn't fair. Granted, I've seen recently Seth uh, call out curse at Drew McIntyre on Twitter. I mean, I wish he could have said that on Monday Night Raw, but obviously he couldn't. I wish he could have said something other than diarrhea, but it's neither here nor there. So, yeah, they can. But at the same time, it's, it's one of those things where it is a double standard because he's the rock. He he's the rock. He sits at the board. So I I is it fair? No. Cause I would love for and I, I just feel like in certain feuds and certain situations and with certain talent, you kind of let them have a little bit more of that edginess. So maybe that's part of the reason why Cody hasn't, you know, turned it up on the microphone a little bit more. Granted, the only reason why I can't really give cody an out for that is because drew has been cooking 
on the microphone for months now and on social media and he doesn't have to curse much because he's being an asshole he's being a troll he's being, <laughs> he's being the ultimate cm punk hater and what he's been saying to seth and anybody else so there's ways around it to bring off the aggressiveness you don't always have to curse but we know there's few people in wwe history that can get away with saying certain things the rock is one of them stone cold is another uh john cena is another i think roman reigns has a little bit more leeway than a lot of the other people that, that's just what it's always been but especially the rock he can do that because he's on the board what are they gonna fucking do so it's unfair and i wish they they would allow more wrestlers to kind of kind of get into that bag as well too next up the wwe had to censor smackdown for the funniest reason for speaking of the rock did the wwe have to censor smackdown out because of the great one well that appears to be the case as x account fadeaway media is reporting a yeah. female fan apparently flashed the camera during the rock segment so they had to black out the screen and it's been a while since fans have flashed the cameras during wwe I TV. Didn't see this long time wwe fans will recall it happening during the attitude era uh -huh. and it's unknown whether this fan was particularly happy to see the rock looking for their 15 minutes of fame or hoping to revive the adage anything can happen in the wwe next up bright i definitely don't remember seeing that so if y'all did y'all saw it it was like a blackout y'all let me know but i don't remember seeing it everything seemed normal on my feed at the time so its hall of fame status still unknown is the late great bray wyatt being inducted into this year's hall of fame while it seems like many fans believe this is a good way to honor bray's legacy the wwe hasn't made any formal announcement mm -hmm. and according to dave Meltzer, the promotion is still going over the decision it was confirmed to us yesterday that with the exception of leah maivia all members of the 2024 hall of fame class have been announced Regarding rumors of Bray Wyatt, obviously he was on the list at one point, but it's not planned, or at mm. least it wasn't of yesterday. The impression I was given is that he will be put in soon. Do you think Bray will be inducted this year? Let us know in the comments down below. Next Here's the thing. I I I get I get it. Maybe they've already had the list and or kind of the idea of people. I'm sure if he doesn't get in it this year, he will most likely be in it next year. He will. The dude. He deserves to be in it because of his creativity in the characters that he created, bro. The title reigns that he had could have been better, should have been better, and that's on booking. That's that's booking side of things. But his creative mind and what he was able to come up with, he deserves to be there, bro. He's one of the most creative wrestlers ever the business has ever seen, bro some unique stuff stuff that he kind of took from other people with their permission and kind of added his spin to it bro and it worked a lot of times when you you venture outside the box it don't work the shit worked he got over multiple times at the bad booking decisions because i want y'all to understand getting repackaged i think he was repackaged like three times getting repackaged a lot of times it does not it's not successful once people see you as one way they just look at you as one way but he got repackaged multiple times and was still able to get over so he deserves to be there man hopefully if not this year next year for sure next up are wwe superstars appearing in another promotion as interesting developments concerning the wwe and the promotion game changer wrestling as one wwe superstar is already booked for gcw's upcoming blood sport event yep. josh barnett of gcw tweeted what does it mean when a queen takes up the sword and marches to war blood victory glory from battlefields all over the world mma and ufc nxt wwe stardom and more to now step into a ring she was made for from the beginning the War Master's disciple, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, comes to Josh Barnett's Bloodsport X. That's the GCW's crazy. GCW's Bloodsport events are work shoots that are special variations from traditional pro wrestling matches. First, the only way to pin is by knockout or submission. Second, there's no traditional wrestling ring. Instead, competitors fight on a wrestling mat with no ropes or turnbuckles. The Bloodsport events traditionally feature pro wrestlers with MMA backgrounds, which makes Shayna Baszler a great fit. 
It's unknown whether this is a one-time arrangement, a test for future collaborations, or the beginning of a working relationship with GCW. However, Dave Meltzer noted in an update on Wrestling Observer Figure 4 Online that regarding Shayna Baszler at Bloodsport and other WWE talent doing indie dates that week, we're told it was Paul Levesque's decision and that Paul Levesque has a different view on things mm -hmm. than Vince McMahon had. According to Wrestling News Andrew Ravens, more WWE stars will be announced soon. One of the most interesting aspects That's of this awesome. sharing of WWE talent is what other promotions will send talent to blood sport events, especially a rival such as AEW. But there you have it, folks. The wild. That's wild. When uh, y'all were telling me about that yesterday, I was like, yo, we're in a different time in WWE. Vince would have never did. Vince only viewed WWE as the only place for wrestling. So the fact that she's going to be able to do that and other wrestlers as well, that's crazy. Now, now, what would probably be the biggest, craziest thing, and I don't know if we will see this in our lifetime, maybe, maybe, but what would be the biggest and the craziest collaboration? And you already know where I'm going with AEW and WWE. Dead ash. Now you would say, well, how? Because WWE wouldn't benefit from that. I don't think, not necessarily. I think they would benefit in the, the wrestling public opinion for working with AEW. And AEW obviously would benefit from working with WWE. If they ever did some, it don't even have to be a joint pay-per-view. Allowing one of their, their, their contract wrestlers to work with WWE, like some people are, are hoping that Tony Khan will allow um, Dustin Rhodes to uh, help out Cody at this year's WrestleMania. That just something like that. It could be something as small as one wrestler who's under contract doing something for the other company for that one night. Something as simple as that. That would be fucking crazy. It would. It would be fantastic. I would I would like to see that. I don't know if we ever will. And maybe one day we will. Maybe they do do something with Dustin. I don't know. I doubt it. Because Tony Khan, you know, he has his issues with WWE. So I don't know. But I like the fact that WWE is heading in the right direction. And we may see that. It may not be anytime soon. But we may see that in our lifetime. Where there is some type of mini crossover with AEW and WWE. Because I think... We've never really seen that in from the big companies in wrestling. Not, I'm not talking about the territory days. I'm talking about from the big companies like WCW and WWE. You knew you weren't going to see nothing like that unless someone jumped ship. So to see AEW and WWE at one point maybe doing something like that, that would be monumental. And it would be it would show that you can like whichever company and still enjoy wrestling bro it's it's shouldn't be a war there's no war it's just which show you like more what's your preference so comment down below let me know would y'all be down if wwe and aew was able to do some type of collab whether it's someone appearing on the other person's show other company's show or maybe doing like a a little mini well, I wouldn't say many. It would be huge. Like, I don't know about a pay-per-view situation. I think that's... A, you don't want to kind of do that because then you got to figure out which company a uh, wrestler is going to win over the other. I don't know about that. I think that would cause a lot more problems than good. But doing some type of joint ventures with each other, whether it's a few people or, you know, whatever the case is, some joint ventures with the wrestlers involved, would you guys like to see that? Because I think that would be kind of cool. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel Road to 150K. And I'm still Young Speedy, YouTube wrestling champ of the world. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. See y'all next one. Peace.